Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. Measles outbreaks in two states, New York and Washington, have public health officials scrambling to try to contain the disease. These new outbreaks have occurred despite the fact that measles was supposed to be eliminated in the United States nearly two decades ago. How is this happening? It's due to significant numbers of children not being vaccinated. And here to talk about the measles outbreak is infectious disease expert, Dr. Pratish Tosh. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Tosh. It's good to see you again. Good to see you guys. Thank you for having me. Whenever I see a story that there's a pocket type of outbreak like this, I know you, Dr. Poland, I mean, your heads are probably any pediatrician that we ever interview, your heads are exploding. Um, That's basically what happened. It's a whole pocket of non-vaccinated children, right? Yeah. And when you're looking at sort of vaccine hesitancy issues, and that's what this is, right? It's not people who don't have access to to vaccines. It's people who are choosing not to vaccinate their kids. Um, And anyone who would uh, objectively looking at the data would not make the decision not to vaccinate their kids. Um, But often it is people whose neighbors and close friends are not vaccinating their kids. And so it, it sort of sways your view of, of what the data might be and which sources you are looking for for truth. Um, and so if you know, there's a social pressure that people don't uh, recognize in themselves, in that if your friends are not vaccinating, there is a real social pressure that if you vaccinate your kids, you may be ostracized by the community that, that wow. is around you, right? And so in the setting when there is no measles, because everybody else is getting vaccinated, that is a very, actually a very real subconscious decision that people make, right? And it's, uh, you, there, you, when you look at decision making, there's, uh, <clears throat> there's uh, o- overt decisions and then things that are a little bit more subconscious. And you will, people will create the reasons like, well, the vaccine is, can cause all these harms and things like that. But often it is that social pressure that the people that they are around, their support um, are not vaccinating their kids and therefore they're not going to do the same for their kids. Let's talk about measles for a second. What is it about measles that makes you so sick? So the, the virus is extraordinarily contagious that um, it's amongst the most contagious uh, organisms we have. How quickly does it spread? Oh, it will, I mean, you can go, just go through an, an unvaccinated or uh, otherwise susceptible population, I mean, quickly, I mean, within days. Um, and uh, people are going to be you know, coughing and, and uh, you know, spreading the virus. And it can actually, it's airborne, so it actually stay in a room after somebody's left it. And if you know, within a couple hours somebody else comes in who's susceptible, like they can you know, get get the disease. Um, because vaccines have been so successful, we've forgotten about how terrible this disease is. We've lost our community memory for its impact. Um, Which I don't think is a surprise. It isn't, right? We, it's sort of a victim of its own success, right? right? That um, and even look at... Yeah, in at the year 2000, WHO looking at on the worldwide measles deaths, and we're looking at over half a million children every year dying. And thankfully, we've increased vaccine um, availability in the developing world, and those numbers are now about 150,000. But we're still talking about 150,000 kids dying every year from a vaccine-preventable disease. Uh, we, as a sort of in developing in developed countries, have forgotten about all that and forgot about that impact. Uh, I can tell you that we would expect that if 500 Americans who have access to American health care were to get measles, that we will f- between one in 500 and one in 1,000 will die in an industrialized country with modern medical care. It is a severe infection. Um, you know, th- thankfully, the, the outbreaks are not that common, and often it triggers uh, those who are unvaccinated or whose kids are unvaccinated to get vaccinated because suddenly that risk uh, changes in their mind. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, we don't see that many measles. And so uh, thankfully we don't see that many measles deaths. But if we continue this trajectory where we don't have kids just universally vaccinated who can get the vaccine, which is pretty much everyone, almost everyone, um, then we're going to see more measles cases. And then we're going to start see more measles deaths. 
Well, Dr. Tosh, I think what what sometimes you mentioned the victim of its own success. It's a it's it's a really important thing to remember. It's also not just oh well, these are otherwise healthy kids, so maybe it won't be so bad. I mean, I've I've seen some of that rationalization. Yeah. I think the piece that worries me as well is a um, you know having a, a some close friends dealing with a, a, an illness like acute leukemia um, and having taken care of a lot of patients whose bodies are immunosuppressed through things we as physicians give them as part of trying to treat other diseases. We leave other populations vulnerable who either cannot get vaccinated um, or are going through treatments that leave them susceptible to these these infections. And so it's even the harm that can be done, we may not see it because it's not our own child, um, if that's something. So I, I guess I wonder, when you think, when you counsel patients um, who have immune suppression, who, who are going through illnesses where they need to be more careful, how do you talk to them about kind of the risks of being out in public when with with all this unknown, where we don't know what the vaccination rates are, so how do you how do you do that with patients? No, uh, I will. Um, patients will often ask me that, and they actually ask me about unvaccinated relatives often. Sure, and um, you know they're they're they want the kids around them, but also don't want the kids around them, right? And uh, that's a difficult discussion. Uh, some of these diseases are going to spread before people are really symptomatic. You know, mm-hmm. Measles is contagious before the rash um, really gets all over. Um, and so, you know, is it safe to be around a, a kid with a fever um, <clears throat> if you were immunocompromised? And the general answer to that is no. Uh, but, you know, in, you know, encouraging the kids to get vaccinated. But, you know, if they haven't listened to their own doctor, they're unlikely to have listened to this other person. Yeah. Can you have measles? And I mean, obviously, not everyone dies from it. Uh, is it yeah. just a severe case of measles results in death, or I, I, because I don't know, is it like chicken pox, where you maybe get a slight case or a severe case? Yeah. So there is a spectrum of disease, and most kids will get a high fever and a rash, feel pretty lousy, and then get better. Uh, there are, however, those who will get complications, including pneumonia and encephalitis, so infection of the brain itself. And, uh, you know, those are the ones who end up dying. As long as we have you here, let's ask a quick question about the flu season. How are we doing with the flu season so far? Depends where you live. (laughs) So it's interesting. Uh, Usually it's one flu strain, usually an H1N1 strain or an H3N2 strain that predominates as the epidemic during the year. Uh, Unusual for this year is that different parts of the country are having different strains. So most of the United States, it's an H1N1 strain. And in the southeast, it's a H3N2 strain. Um, the H1N1 strain that's in most of the country is well matched to the vaccine strain. Um, and usually H1N1 has higher vaccine efficacy. However, in the, uh, about 70% are, are for H3N2 in the southeast uh, seem to be well matched to the vaccine. So uh, I presume people in the southeast of the United States are actually having a far worse time with influenza uh, than the rest of the country. Um, and so, yeah, this is an interesting year. Um, in general, H1N1, H1N1 epidemics are less severe than H3N2 epidemics. Um, but you know, for the person who actually has influenza, uh, it's pretty bad either way. Yeah. Well, and it, it's um, it's interesting that you bring up the vaccine efficacy because, again, we often, um, like lots of things, we don't complain or don't worry as much when things are going well. And it's when things are bad that we forget all the hard work that goes into figuring out how to match strains to vaccine and, 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 and the ramifications that that has for the health of a, for the health of a country. So it's a, it's a impressive year for health officials being able to do things well. Yeah. It's also, it's more complicated that even when we, if it's a well match and we're still looking at between 30 and 65% of vaccine efficacy. Now that's to prevent the actual illness, but we do know that even if you get, the infection, if you've been vaccinated, you'll have less right. severe complications. You know, kids who have gotten vaccinated are far more li- far less likely to die. Anecdotally, I was going to say that's the folks, the adults that I know who have gotten the flu did have the shot and have it much less severely mm-hmm. than yeah. other people do. So that's th- good. Yeah. One of the things about vaccine preventable diseases is, is that uh, you never notice when they're working. <laughs> right. Like today, <laughs> I didn't get polio. Yay! <laughs> We've been That's ta- tough. <laughs> yeah. Like how to- <laughs> We've been talking some uh, hot topics, including measles outbreak and the update on flu season with infectious disease specialist, Dr. Pratish Tosh. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks a lot.